Rex on call. We're looking at the heart pumping. Take an inside look at the latest in medical technology, treatments, and health trends. Surgery uh, with that extra edge. Physicians are a phone call away, and Rex patients share stories. I was ready to find out, you know, what was really wrong. And medical breakthroughs. We're North Carolina's first bionic couple. Stories like yours, doctors answering your questions with expertise and compassion. We're live now with Rex on call in the NBC 17 studios. I crashed in between and slid down a wall and uh, was sitting there and then some friends came and had a look at me and tried to communicate. I couldn't talk, I couldn't move anymore. As the one who's having the stroke or had the stroke, you really can't do a lot uh, and I didn't realize what was happening so it's really your friends or the people that are around you that need to be alert as soon as you see those signs. Don't wait. This North Raleigh minister preaches the warning signs after strokes suddenly hit during his Sunday prayer. Hello and welcome to Rex on Call. I'm your host, Melody Hunter Pillion with Rex Healthcare. Stroke is called the silent killer, and for good reason. When it strikes, the victim is unaware of what's happening, and if those around them don't act quickly, it can be deadly or permanently debilitating. Coming up, you'll see how fast action led to what doctors call a miraculous recovery when this Wake County minister suffered a stroke while at prayer. Stroke is the third leading cause of death in North Carolina, and our state has the sixth highest stroke death rate in the nation. Certain parts of our viewing area are actually considered to be in the stroke belt. Now, if you're watching us live now and you have questions about stroke prevention, treatment, or the warning signs, you can call us. Our operators are ready to take your calls. Your questions may be read and answered live in our program by our experts here tonight. Just dial the number. You can see it at the bottom of your screen, 1-888-309-7437. Again, that's 1-888-309-7437 for Rex on Call. Our operators are standing by to take your call. Now, you can also submit your questions via Twitter. Just log on to twitter.com backslash Rex on Call, and you can send us a tweet. The experts answering your questions this evening are neurologist Dr. Kenneth Carnes. He's the medical director of the stroke program at Rex Healthcare and cardiologist Dr. Deepak Posse with Rex Heart and Vascular Specialists. Now back to the local church minister. 35-year-old Reverend Stephen Krugar began a normal Sunday morning at the Catch Fire Church in North Raleigh, but ended the day in the hospital, unable to move or speak. I came in, prayed with the people, and then came out and worship started. And um, in, while worship was happening, um, I started feeling a little bit weak and funny in some ways. Reverend Stefan Krugar has prayed in his native Germany, Africa, Canada, around the world. But it was just 11 days before this interview in his North Raleigh church, he had a feeling he'd never had before. And so I laid down for a while and just, um, concentrated on God, and, but I realized while I was doing that that my right side was um, feeling weak and I couldn't move my right, my right side anymore. I was not really concerned. I realized it was not good, but I thought it was just something. I needed some more food or some more something to drink. But I never made it to the washroom. I crashed in between and slid down a wall and uh, was sitting there. And then some friends came and had a look at me and tried to communicate. I couldn't talk. I couldn't move anymore. I was just sitting there. One friend took quick action. I could see him um, calling the ambulance. And then a couple of minutes later, the fire department was there as first responders. And then I think two or three minutes later, maybe five minutes later, the, the ambulance was there. And they were trying to figure out what was happening, but I couldn't react, I couldn't speak, and I was so tired. But then they packed me on that um, stretcher, and um, I think um, all in all, it, it probably was about half an hour or something like that till I really ar arrived in the hospital. It was very, very quick. There were a lot of people suddenly in the emergency room. I couldn't really use my right hand and my right leg, and I couldn't speak at all. He says 30 minutes after arriving in the Rex Hospital Emergency Department, he was given TPA. Tissue plasminogen activator. Uh, we abbreviate it with the term TPA. Uh, that's a medication that actually dissolves blood clots. And in the right patient, if administered early on, that's typically within three hours of the onset of symptoms, it can drastically improve uh, their outcome. Diluting my blood on a very, very high level and dispersing the, the, the clock that was there. Time is brain, and the longer you wait after the onset of stroke symptoms, uh, the 
higher the chance that you'll have long-term neurologic deficits. I realized later on that it was something very special that, um, um, that I had a three-hour window and um, that it was that there needed to be consents between the doctors to actually do that because they couldn't reach my family in Germany. I think after the TBA, it was like an hour after that that um, I was able to you speak again at least a few words. I had a feeling in my heart that it was okay, it would, that it would get better, that I would get, gain my strength back, that I would gain speech back. I never had any fear. Five days later, he left the hospital. Speech and movement fully returned. It's amazing. I mean, the, the doctors came in and a lot of people came in from the medical staff and said, you know, it's, you're our wonder man, our miracle man, they said. So, um, yeah, I, I have a good idea that that is very, very special, and I'm very thankful for that. I'm doing really well. In addition to being an associate pastor and directing the leadership school in his church, he's a living testimony of what quick action can do when a stroke strikes. So it's really your friends or the people that are around you that need to be alert. And if you see anybody just crashing down and not able to speak or, um, you know, face being paralyzed on one side, um, don't wait, just um, rush them into the hospital, call, um, call for help and get them in as quickly as possible because there's the three hour window where stuff can happen and um, help. So it's really your friends or the people that are around you that need to be alert and if you see anybody just crashing down and not able to speak or um, you know, face being paralyzed on one side, um, don't wait, just um, rush them into the hospital, call, um, call for help and get them in as quickly as possible because there's the three hour window where stuff can happen and um, help. An important message from Reverend Stephen Krugar. He's really a testament to how, how fast action can really make a difference. And, and as far as Dr. Krugar goes, or Reverend Krugar uh, could goes, I should say, Dr. Posse and, and Dr. Carnes, how unusual is his story? Or is it very typical of how quickly um, the symptoms um, strike a patient? This is a typical presentation. Uh, we think of stroke as a sudden brain attack with sudden onset of symptoms. So patients can go from feeling completely normal to having neurologic impairment really within seconds to a few minutes. And tell me, what exactly is a stroke? We think of a stroke as a brain attack, and you really can div divide it into two separate types of brain attacks. The first is a lack of oxygen, which we call ischemia, mm -hmm. and that typically happens when a blood vessel is blocked, either with a blood clot within the blood vessel or a blood clot that comes from elsewhere into the brain and blocks that blood vessel. The second type of stroke is actually when a blood vessel bursts and there's bleeding into the brain and that blood and the lack of oxygen from that bleeding cause damage to the brain tissue. And as we said at the beginning of the program, Dr. Carnes is a neurologist, Dr. Deep, or Dr. Deepak Posse is here and he is a cardiologist. So Dr. Posse, how is it that the stroke is somehow associated um, with, the, with the heart? Uh, there are two ways uh, that uh, stroke and heart kind of associate with each other. Mm -hmm. One is, you know, as uh, Dr. Carnes just mentioned, 90% of the strokes are really ischemic. That means it involves the blood vessels and blood clots. And most of the heart problems are also vascular. That means hardening of the arteries, atherosclerosis. That's one way both the cause of stroke and cause of heart attacks are sort of similar. The second way how the heart is affected uh, is involved, uh, you know, in, in patients who might have stroke sure. is you can have rhythm problems. Like, you know, the, one of the most common rhythm problems we see is atrial fibrillation, mm -hmm. uh, where, you know, the blood can clot on the sides of the atrium, which is the top chambers of the heart, and those clot can break loose and go to the brain and cause a stroke. So that's one, of the, one way uh, clots can uh, break loose and go to the brain. The second is if somebody has a big heart attack, there's an area of the heart that doesn't move. Clots can form there, and a clot can again break loose and go to the brain, causing a stroke. So these um, clots that break loose go to the brain and cause a blockage there, and that would be then the ischemic yes, stroke that correct. you're talking an about. An ischemic stroke. And then we had a call that came in from Spring Lake over near Cumberland County or in Cumberland County, and Betty wants to know, uh, what are the chances of having a second stroke if you've already had one? Is that is that typical, or, or is that very unusual, Dr. Garns? It's actually quite typical. Uh, having a history of a single stroke 
puts you at a much higher risk for a second stroke. Uh, and that's basically because those patients already have known risk factors. Mm -hmm. Things like high blood pressure, mm -hmm. diabetes, underlying heart disease, a family history of stroke, uh, which can all lead to a higher risk in the, in the long term. Okay, so definitely the possibilities are there. We're going to be taking a break, but when we come back, Chris from Raleigh called in, and he wants to talk about atrial fibrillation and about that risk for stroke, and if there's anything you can do, we're going to talk about that when we come back. And also the warning signs of stroke when we return, and more of your questions for Dr. Carnes and Dr. Posse. While we're in the break, call our phone bank and ask your question. That's 1-888-309-7437. This month, we are recognizing stroke awareness and ask you to be a part of our Red Tie for Stroke campaign in honor of late. North Carolina Insurance Commissioner Jim Long. Just visit RedSelf.com for stroke information, details, and to get your red tie pin. We'll be right back. The most common risk factors that we're dealing with include a history of high blood pressure, uh, diabetes, high cholesterol, tobacco use, uh, and a strong family history. Rex, Wake County's first choice for health care. Rex on call, where doctors give you an inside look. So we know we're right behind the heart. At the latest treatments. We take this part of the stomach right here. Where you can call with your health questions. I was ready to find out, you know, what was really wrong. If you had questions, you could ask questions. And get answers from experts at Rex Healthcare. I'm Melody Hunter Pillion. Physicians will take your questions and I'll share patient stories. It was just, it was life changing. Our next show, Stroke Awareness, a Raleigh minister suffers stroke during prayer, Saturday, November 13th at 7.30 p.m. Before the bariatric surgery, I really remember being quite miserable. I was self-conscious about my size, challenging to do anything from tying my shoes to getting in and out of my car. Rex is a certified bariatric center. And they have a great success rate. It was like people looked through me before, but now it feels like people see me. Life is just so much easier. My brother and dad, they love to play their sports. They really like tennis, bowling, golf, hockey, but their favorite is football. Hi! Hey, hey, hey. Oh! Mom, we need to go to Rex Express Care again. Whenever sudden sickness or injury strike, we always go to Rex Express Care. You can check wait times online with no appointment necessary. When you can't wait to feel better. Rematch. Rex Express Care. I'm surprised it happened, but I'm also, I know that we have no control. I know there's a couple of things I can change. Um, lose a little bit of weight, do more sports. Yeah, that was Raleigh Minister Stephen Krugar sharing his experience as a stroke patient. Welcome back to Rex on Call. We're live on NBC 17. We're taking your questions on stroke. Medical Director of the Rex Stroke Program, neurologist Dr. Kenneth Carnes, and cardiologist Dr. Deepak Posse are here to answer your questions. You can call our phone bank at 1 888 309 7437. And, gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and take more questions. We have a lot of calls. As we went into the television break, we said that um, Chris had called from Raleigh, and we want to go ahead and answer her question. Uh, Chris, thanks for calling. Calling. Chris says atrial fibrillation puts you at greater risk for stroke. Other than taking medications, what can you do to prevent a stroke if you have atrial fibrillation? Let's talk about what that is, atrial fibrillation, and, and is there something you can do besides medication? Now, atrial fibrillation is one of the most common rhythm disorders that we see. The heart has four chambers, two at the top, two at the bottom. Mm -hmm. When people go into atrial fibrillation, the top two chambers of the heart are fibrillating at about 400 to 600 times a minute. So they are not squeezing. What that happens is the blood pools on the edges, clots can form, and it can break loose and cause a stroke. Okay. Now what causes atrial fibrillation, any kind of heart problem, you know, you can have high blood pressure, diabetes, clogged arteries, thyroid problems. Mm -hmm. So there are many causes of atrial fibrillation. Now in terms of the question, uh, the, the, there are two medicines that we use to prevent strokes uh, in atrial fibrillation. One is Coumadin, right. which is the most common agent that we use uh, to prevent strokes, and the second is aspirin. And there are certain criteria we use, you know, which person would be better served with aspirin and which person would be better served with Coumadin. Okay. And then our next question comes from Deborah Turner, and Deborah is calling us from Johnston County. She says, if you're on Coumadin um, for um, 
atrial fibrillation, should you stop taking it with this new study saying there's more risk than benefit? If maybe I can have both of you talk about that or apparently there's a new study out saying perhaps, what would you say to patients who might be asking their doctors about this? Uh, Coumadin, the Coumadin actually is the mainstay to okay. prevent strokes uh, in people with atrial fibrillation. Mm -hmm. Now the only reason we would uh, not use stroke, uh, not use uh, Coumadin in a patient with stroke is if we, f or in a patient with atrial fibrillation, if we feel that the risk benefit ratio favors not using Coumadin. Like for example, there's a person who's unsteady on his feet. Sure. tends to fall frequently. Yes, you know, the person might have head injury and hence uh, Coumadin would be contraindicated. Now, the, the, the studies that come out uh, really, I, I would strongly urge people actually not to stop the Coumadin until they talk to their physician. All right, so Deborah, the person who knows your best, your medical history, your own physician, do have a great talk with him about that. And then we had a call that came in from Henderson. Um, is a person predisposed to having a stroke regardless of age? And let's talk about that, Dr. Carnes. We saw that um, the gentleman that we told the story about was relatively young, only 35. So tell us about you know, age and stroke. We really think of stroke as a disease of middle-aged to older adults. When I say middle-aged, uh, about the age of 55 and above. Uh, the story about Reverend Krugar is atypical, and we would think of him as stroke in a young patient. Right. 35 is quite young, mm -hmm. uh, unless he had significant risk factors like the atrial fibrillation. Uh, in younger patients, we have to think out of the box about causes that may be atypical. And we often look to see if those patients coagulate their blood too quickly or, and are in what are, what's called a hypercoagulable state. Uh, and that requires some special blood testing, looking at family history, and again, thinking out of the box about why they've had this event at such a young age. Okay. When we return, um, Queen called from Feville over in Cumberland County, and she says, what are the signs of a mini-stroke versus real stroke? And Dr. Carnes is going to talk about that because we hear that term a lot, mini-stroke, and we really are going to give you those warning signs for stroke and talk about a technology that can even perhaps show you if you might be um, almost on the verge of having a stroke. We're going to have more questions from our viewers coming up. Stay with us. When somebody tells you that you have cancer, the first thing you think is that you're going to die. It was um, a shock. I was devastated, to say the least, but I, I knew that I had to do something. People at Rex helped me get through a very difficult time. Everyone was not only professional, but treated me in such a thoughtful and considerate manner. I made a conscious decision to choose Rex, and for me, it was the best thing I could have done. Rex on Call, where doctors give you an inside look. So we know we're right behind the heart. At the latest treatments. We take this part of the stomach right here. Where you can call with your health questions. I was ready to find out, you know, what was really wrong. If you had questions, you could ask questions. And get answers from experts at Rex Healthcare. I'm Melody Hunter Pillion. Physicians will take your questions and I'll share patient stories. It was just, it was life changing. Our next show, Heartburn and Finding Relief, will take your questions live Saturday, December 4th at 7.30 p.m. My name is Margot Parks. I'm 58 years old. I was having some problems sleeping. Tyrone even said to me, he said, you know, Margot, I'm getting concerned because you're not getting any rest. You're exhausted during the day. I heard about the Heart Aware Risk Assessment, and I decided that I wanted to go and look at it. I found that my sleeping problem was actually a heart problem. Log on to RexHealth.com. Take a free heart evaluation that could save your life and receive your Smart Women at Heart Kit. I feel like Heart Aware has given me my life back. Furniture provided by Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries in Raleigh-Durham. Our phones are really busy tonight. Welcome back to the show. We're standing by to take your comments and questions on stroke live here with Rex on Call. Neurologist and Rex Stroke Program Director, Dr. Kenneth Carnes, and cardiologist, Dr. Deepak Posse with Rex Heart and Vascular Specialists are with us. If you have a question, go ahead and call our guest and ask them. Call us at 1-888-309-7437. And... Um, Queen called in from Fable. We want to get to her question. She wants to know, what are the signs of a mini stroke versus a real stroke, Dr. Carnes? What is there a difference between those two? Often the same symptoms between a mini stroke and a real stroke, but we think of a mini stroke as being temporary or transient, and that's why it's often called a transient ischemic attack or TIA. Symptoms come on, last a brief amount of time from minutes 
up to an hour and then resolve with a, a completed stroke or a major stroke the symptoms come on but persist and then it's associated with damage that we can see in the brain with a CAT scan or an MRI scan. Okay. Folks want to know the warning signs for stroke because we've told them, look out um, if you see these signs in someone else. Let's talk about what are those five warming, or warning signs. We call it give me five for stroke. What are those? Well, the, the five major things we like to think about or tell patients about. Uh, number one, uh, are they off balance when they're ambulating or walking? Uh, number two, do they have slurred speech or droopiness in their face? Number three, is there weakness on one side of the body? Uh, number four, is there a change in vision, such as blurry vision? And number five, are they suffering from an unusual severe headache that's atypical for that, that patient? All right, so if folks see the, those signs, get that person to the hospital as soon as they can. Absolutely. And as we saw with Reverend Kruger, um, being able to administer the TPA, if it's done in the right amount of time, can make a huge difference. Absolutely, time is brain. Okay, and let's also now talk about, if we, if we can, Dr. Posse, is um, the Doppler Duplex, this wonderful technology that we have within the stroke pro uh, program where they can sort of diagnose if perhaps you're getting close to having a stroke. T t talk to us about that. We've got some video of it while you discuss it. Uh, the Doppler uh, uh, test basically uses ultrasound waves to uh, transmit through your carotid arteries, and if they get clogged up, you have a risk of having a stroke. So with an ultrasound, you can tell how badly the carotid arteries are clogged up. And if the blockage is like more than 70%, then something needs to be done. And typically, uh, depending upon the patient, depending upon the risk of the patient, they either do something called a carotid endarterectomy where the surgeon goes in and removes the plaque or they put stents in the carotid arteries okay. to clear up the, uh, uh, the, the blockage and open up the uh, carotid artery to get blood flow established. All right, and the video we were watching there is Dr. Wayne Smith at, at Rex Hospital, and that gentleman that he had performed uh, uh, the Doppler duplex on, we did a story about that, in 90% blockage, which wow. is incredible. So yes. people are walking around and that close to a stroke without any idea. I want to get to this question, um, Frankie, and I, I don't know, this sounds, odd to me, uh, this sort of um, remedy, but you tell, tell me if this actually works, uh, Dr. Posse and Dr. Carnes. If you think you're having a stroke and you go and pack yourself in a bath with ice, will that help? Does that, I mean, again, that may sound odd to me, but maybe there's truth in it, or is that a myth? And if it's a myth, let's dispel it. Uh, I think it's a myth, and I think that there's some danger in considering that as a potential therapy. Uh, and I would actually advise patients not to do that, but instead, go directly to the emergency room and seek care. The only instance where we know where packing somebody in ice, which is lowering their body temperature, makes a difference is when somebody has had their heart stop and had a cardiac arrest. And through that mechanism, a lack of oxygen to the brain. We're now doing protocols where we actually cool patients in a very controlled fashion in the ICU, and it can make a difference in outcome. But I would advise patients not to try this at home, not to go to their bathtub and pack themselves right. in ice, but rather go straight to the emergency room. I'm glad we addressed that and dispel that myth. We're going to thank you for your questions. And of course, always have a discussion with your own physician about any health concerns. We'll have a final round of questions coming right up. This is Rex on Call. Rex on Call, where doctors give you an inside look. So we know we're right behind the heart at the latest treatments. We take this part of the stomach right here. Where you can call with your health questions. I was ready to find out, you know, what was really wrong. If you had questions, you could ask questions. And get answers from experts at Rex Healthcare. I'm Melody Hunter Pillion. Physicians will take your questions and I'll share patient stories. It was just, it was life changing. Our next show, Stroke Awareness, a Raleigh minister suffers stroke during prayer, Saturday, November 13th at 7.30 p.m. Before the bariatric surgery, I really remember being quite miserable. I was self-conscious about my size, challenging to do anything from tying my shoes to getting in and out of my car. Rex is a certified bariatric center, and they have a great success rate. It was like people looked through me before, but now it feels like people see me. Life is just so much easier.
My name is Margot Parks. I'm 58 years old. I was having some problems sleeping. Tyrone even said to me, he said, you know, Margot, I'm getting concerned because you're not getting any rest. You're exhausted during the day. I heard about the heart aware risk assessment and I decided that I wanted to go and look at it. I found that my sleeping problem was actually a heart problem. Log on to RexHealth.com, take a free heart evaluation that could save your life, and receive your Smart Women at Heart Kit. I feel like Hardware has given me my life back. Rex on Call, where doctors give you an inside look. So we know we're right behind the heart. At the latest treatments. We take this part of the stomach right here. Where you can call with your health questions. I was ready to find out, you know, what was really wrong. If you had questions, you could ask questions. And get answers from experts at Rex Healthcare. I'm Melody Hunter Pillion. Physicians will take your questions and I'll share patient stories. It was just, it was life changing. Our next show, Heartburn and Finding Relief, will take your questions live Saturday, December 4th at 7.30 p.m. Welcome back to Rex and Call, live on NBC 17. We're going to try to get in three more questions in a minute and a half. Let's go. Lori in Youngsville Call, she says she wakes up in the middle of the night, heart pounding about 120 beats per uh, minute for 15 minutes and feels nauseated and lightheaded. Are these symptoms of a stroke? Uh, definitely not. Uh, this is probably has something to do with a rhythm problem in the heart. So I would suggest that she seek, uh, you know, uh, talk to her family physician and maybe get a referral to a good cardiologist. All right, so it doesn't sound like stroke, but please, Lori, see your physician about it. Dr. Karen Sharon called in from Holly Springs. She says, um, TIA, is, does that mean you're predisposed to a stroke? How can you prevent this? TIA, as we talked about, is a transient ischemic attack or mini stroke. And yes, it's an absolute red flag warning sign that you could go on to have a completed stroke. So you absolutely need to see your doctor possibly need a referral to a neurologist. Okay, uh, let's talk about this because this is really important. If we can help folks prevent having a stroke in the first place, what can you do to reduce, uh, reduce your risk for a stroke? Now, we, Dr. Carnes had, Carnes had mentioned earlier as to what are the predisposing factors for mm -hmm. stroke. And uh, again, once you know the predisposing factors for stroke, then you can prevent it. High blood pressure is one of the most important. Make sure your blood pressure is under control. Diabetes, make sure your diabetes is under control. Cholesterol, make sure the cholesterol is under control, whether you use diet, exercise, or medications. Don't drink too much alcohol. Excessive alcohol is also associated with stroke. Smoking, one really needs to quit smoking to reduce the risk of stroke. And of course, better diet and exercise are extremely important. All right, so everything we can do for prevention. Dr. Carnes, Dr. Posse, we want to thank you both for joining us and answering our viewer questions. And thanks to all of you who phoned or tweeted your questions tonight. We are inviting you to call or send in questions for our next show on heartburn. We'll show the latest tests and treatments that streamline patients to the right solution for them in the Rex Heartburn Center. A surgeon, gastroenterologist, and a heartburn patient will take your questions live. That is Saturday, December the 4th at 7 30 p.m. You can email your heartburn questions in ahead of time. The email address is rexoncall at rexhealth.com. Again, thanks to Dr. Carnes and Dr. Posse for being with us and for their assistance with today's topic. I'm Melody Hunter Pillion. Join me and our host of health experts each month live with Rex on Call. We'll see you next time in December. This has been a paid commercial program. Views expressed belong to its participants and are not necessarily those of the management and staff of NBC 17 WNCN-TV.